This is the OTB Network. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. Just finished a great weekend's worth of stakes racing action. A lot of racing, uh, maybe not necessarily a lot of grade one type of racing, but some pretty interesting horses and maybe some horses that might be worth following through the winter and into next year. We'll start things out at Delta Downs. On Saturday, they ran their Delta Downs jackpot card, a pretty nice card of racing. We'll start out the stakes program with the treasure chest, three and up fillies and mares at a mile. We're set. We're ready. And they're off in the treasure chest at Delta Downs. A picture-perfect beginning. Smoking again is showing early speed. Ruby's big band is right there. Bree Cat on the outside now moves up to engage. They're exiting the chute, and it's Bree Cat on the outside under P-Val up by just ahead. Ruby's big band is going along to the inside second, went to Rohan Singh. It's a break of two lengths then. Smoking again is dropped back at the rail, and going by that one now is winning ride. She eases her way into that third spot. She's only two and a half off the lead. Advancing just off the rail here is Luna Vega, running next to Shotgun Gulch. Down along the inside, that's Smoking again, and hung out wide is Ruling Class. Quarter mile went in 22 and 50, 100 seconds. Unforgotten is the trailer about six lengths from the front now as they race up the back stretch. It is Bree Cat. She's got the lead now, and she's up by three parts of a length with winning ride getting clear on the outside, and the two favorites now hook it up midway up the back stretch. Half mile went in 47 and 33 one hundredths. Those two have put about three or four lengths on Ruby's big band, who's down along the inside as they approach the far turn. Bree Cat fighting hard to maintain the lead under P-Val. Winning ride to the outside, and Joe Talamo still in close attendance. No serious threats from the back yet as heads are turning for home, and Bree Cat is the one to catch. Winning ride is laboring and under a hard ride here. She's not catching up. She gets a crack of the whip. It's three lengths back then to Ruling Class who emerges in that third spot. Then on the outside at Shotgun Gulch. They have just a furlong to go and Bree Cat is opening up now. It's Bree Cat in the lane by five. Winning ride could not keep up with her. Shotgun Gulch is rallying on the outside but coming to the finish it's Bree Cat and Patrick Valenzuela to get another one as he takes the treasure chest. Bree Cat won it. It was close for for second between Shotgun Gulch and Winning Ride. Bree Cat in from California. In fact, the top two runners both in from the Oak Tree uh, meeting at Hollywood Park as Bree Cat picks up the victory on the front end over Winning Ride. It was five and a half lengths back, just getting her nose down on the wire as the favorite over Long Shot Shotgun Gulch. The winner, Bree Cat. Winner of the Las Palmas last time out picks up yet another victory here under none other than Pat Valenzuela. The winner, Bree Cat, a chestnut daughter of Ad Cat from Silk Briefcase by Marlin, was bred in Florida by Ocala Oaks and Don Graham, owned by Holly and David Wilson, trained by Vladimir Sarin, and ridden to victory by P. Val. Bree Cat covers the mile in 138.78. Next up, back to Delta, three and up, going a mile in the Delta Mile. And they're off in the Delta Mile at Delta Downs. Bearing outward a bit at the start was Z Humor. That one is flashing speed though, and the inside and music came is up close. Right there is a battle sweep, and down along the inside first region as they exit the chute. It's Z Humor and Gerard Malonson with a narrow lead here. Down near the inside, you'll find Ann Music came, and running next to that one is Battle Sweep. Right behind the front runners, it's 15 Love, now moving up to battle for that second position, and two lengths clear of first region, who's come off the rail. From there, it's Corrigal Cat. Then at the back of the pack, you'll find Quindisi Man and Harlan Street, who trails. The opening quarter mile went in a rapid 22 and 97 100. Z Humor is setting the pace, and he's got a one length lead. And Music Came is saving all the ground. Up on the outside here is Battle Sweep, who's a very close third. Behind rivals, it's First Regent. They've straightened away. Less than a half mile to race. The opening half went in 47 and 68 one hundredths. Z Humor looks comfortable on the lead, with And Music Came still there in second, but now he's got company from Battle Sweep to the outside. 
and also 15 Love. Behind Rivals, Quindici Man needs a way through traffic. Corrigal Cat looking to launch a rally on the far outside. He's going to be wide into the far turn. Then comes First Region. They are coming for home now. And C. Humor still maintains the lead. No whip out yet from Gerard Malonson. And Music Came is beginning to drive and starting to rally. Behind Rivals, Quindici Man starting to rally himself and he's coming on quickly. Here comes the top of the lane. Z Humor set down for the drive and Music Came digging into the outside. Behind those it's Quindici Man who's down at the rail and then comes Corrigal Cat. But Z Humor has plenty left at 9-5 to five, and Z Humor's going to win another stake at Delta Downs. He takes the Delta Mile. And Music Came in the photo for second with Quindici Man. Z Humor, a horse that uh, had not seen racing since early in October when he was third in the Schaefer Mile at Hoosier on the Indiana Derby card, returns with a front end victory as the favorite by four over end music came. One of the uh, locals in from Evangeline, Quindici Man, completes the order of the top three. Z Humor is a bay son of distorted humor from off the old block by AP Indy. Bred in Kentucky by JFB Stable and owned by Zayat Stable, trained by Steve Asmussen and ridden to victory by Gerard Melanson. Z Humor covers the mile in 138.71. Next up, the Grade 3 Delta Downs Princess, $500,000 for two-year-old fillies. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Delta Downs Princess. A bump on the inside between Grandacious and Patty's Pride as they came away, but Grandacious gets her stride quickly and sticks ahead in front. Perfectly Candid is going right alongside her. Fiscal Policy is up close as well in the black cap. Those three across the track as they come past the grandstand for the first time. Promise Me a Cat, the favorite, placed two and a half off the lead and in that fourth spot. Behind her, it's All About Alley. Then comes Bouquet Booth, who's got about six lengths to make up. And down along the inside, it's Niji's Grand Girl, saving ground under Alvarado. Then it's about four lengths back to Patty's Pride after the quarter mile when in 22 and 17 100 seconds. It's another four to the trailer, Little Widowmaker. Going to the back stretch, well bunched up front. It's Grandacious and Jesse Campbell. Fiscal Policy and Gerard Moranson applying the pressure. Here's Promise Me a Cat between horses now and gaining on the leaders. It's Promise Me a Cat three off the rail and now starting to pick up her stride. Perfectly candid. Behind rivals trying to keep up with the front runners. Niji's Grand Girl has been angled off the rail. She splits horses, moves boldly into fourth, and she's got a big chance. Hung out a bit wide is all about Alley into the far turn. Then comes Bouquet Booth who's going to have to crank it up sooner or later. Then it's Patty's Pride second last and the trailer still is Little Widowmaker. They're coming for home. Grandacious has the lead by a length and a half. Promise me a cat's going to have to work for this one. Niji's Grand Girl is three off the rail racing in third and then comes Bouquet. K Booth, who's putting in a rally. They've reached the top of the lane. Jesse Campbell all out aboard Grandacious. Here comes DJ's Grand Girl. And on the outside is Bouquet Booth. And Bouquet Booth is going to gobble him up late. It's Bouquet Booth. And Niji's Grand Girl and Bouquet Booth wins the Delta Downs Princess. Niji's Grand Girl was second. Third went to Grandacious. Fourth was the favorite. Promise me a cat. Bouquet Booth picks up the victory off a win on the poly track last time out in a maiden special at Keeneland after having run a couple of times at Hoosier prior to that. She scores by a neck from off the pace over Niji's Grand Girl, who she who herself was a recent maiden breaker. Philly that we still ran up here a couple of times at Saratoga. Grandacious completes the order of the top three after showing the way early. The winner, Bouquet Booth, is a dark bay of brown daughter of Flower Alley from Toll Order by Loop Sauvage. Bred in Kentucky by Brookdale and Dr. Ted Forkerth. Owned by Right Time Racing Limited and trained by Steve Margolis. Ridden to victory by Sean Bridgemahan. Bouquet Booth covers the mile in 140.59. Next up, the Grade 3 $1 million Delta Downs jackpot for two year olds. Hey, set, we're ready. And they're off in the Delta Downs jackpot. 
Perfect break for Bug Juice, who goes right to the lead. Aces and Kings is also showing some early speed. Between horses, Rush now is placed right behind the early leaders. Decisive moment starts to cross over. Now he's coming after Bug Juice, as Bug Juice has plenty of company on the front end. Decisive moment is just to his outside. Aces and Kings to the inside. Rush now is behind rivals in fourth. Sweet Ducky in a good spot, racing in fifth, two and a half off the lead. Gourmet Dinner is riding the rails. Then comes Classic Legacy, followed by Clubhouse Ride. Another length back to Blue Laser, who's second last in the trailer as dreams run wild as they run into the first turn. Opening quarter mile in 22 and 66, 100 seconds. Bug Juice is going fast. Decisive moment, breathing down his neck to the outside, not allowing the front runner to rest at all. Down along the inside, Aces and Kings is all bottled up under Burrell. Then comes Rush now to the outside. Advancing his sweet ducky about four wide, vying for that third spot. And then comes Gourmet Dinner, yet to uncork his rally. Two lengths back then. As they go to the far turn, that's Classic Legacy who's going to have to pick it up. Then comes Clubhouse Ride who's about six off the leaders. Another two and a half lengths to Blue Laser who will really need to rally from there. He's got ten to come and Dreams Run Wild is still the trailer. They're coming for home and the Delta Downs jackpot the half in 46.56 three quarters and 111.91 and out there now is Bug Juice on the inside who is gobbled up by Gourmet Dinner as well as Decisive Moment as coming to the top of the lane. Gourmet Dinner has strike the lead. Out there is Decisive Moment racing in second. Then comes Clubhouse Ride. Sweet Ducky's not going to get there and Bug Juice is done. It's Gourmet Dinner and Sebastian Madrid to win the Delta Downs jackpot. Decisive Moment checked in second. Clubhouse Ride was third and Sweet Ducky was a distant fourth. Kind of a crazy race in a number of ways, including the incident at the top of the stretch where uh, aces and kings bolted and took a couple of other horses with him. But in the end, it was Gourmet Dinner who sat a perfect stalking trip under Sebastian Madrid to win going away by two and a quarter over decisive moment clubhouse ride. Completes the order of the top three with an off the pace move into the stretch to get him up to third. The winner gourmet dinner was coming in from Florida. He had won two of the three races that make up the Florida Stallion Series for the uh, two-year-old Colts and Geldings. He was second last time out in the in reality division in that uh, in that program, but he'd run some pretty solid races and was allowed to go off at a pretty generous price of 20 to 1 in this spot. Gourmet Dinner is a bay son of Trippy from Potluck Dinner by Pentelicus. Bred in Florida by Ocala Stud and William J. Terrell, owned by Our Sugar Bear Stable and trained by Steve Standridge. Ridden to victory by Sebastian Madrid. Gourmet Dinner covers the mile in a 16th and 145.23. We'll continue with racing action out of town. We'll head to Mammoth Park next. A couple of uh, stakes over the weekend, starting things out Saturday afternoon. $60,000 frisk me now for older horses at a mile and 70. <laughs> and the frisk me now. Chirac came out running on the lead, goes right to the front with well positioned. The two favorites are prominent early. And it's hop skipping away, Cactus Charlie. Gone astray is out running in fifth position and tucks in behind the leaders in the race to the first turn. And then it's evening Zen on the inside at the discos in the back of the field, along with Sunshine Rambler. And they're nine lengths off the lead as Chirac sets the pace. In front a length and a half over well positioned as they go to the back stretch. The opening quarter completed in 24 seconds flat. Chirac the leader by a length. Well positioned second by three. Cactus Charlie hard held and running in third. After that hop skipping away, here's an early move from At The Disco, who's outside of horses and is gaining ground with every stride. He's gonna go to the lead right now. At The Disco dragging Pablo Fragoso right up to the front as they move down the back stretch. Chirac counters on the rail and well positioned is in between those two after a 48 and one half mile. Two lengths back to hop, skipping away. Then it's evening's end and Cactus Charlie alongside. After that, Sunshine Rambler and Gone Astray is last, but only five lengths off the lead. Round the far turn, Chirac along the rail. Well positioned right alongside. At the disco, made that middle move and is flattened out. Then hop, skipping away. Here's Gone Astray on the far outside coming on. And now down, down toward the inside, Cactus Charlie. They're into the stretch, Chirac to catch. Well positioned, gone astray on the far outside and hop skipping away. It's Chirac in front, well positioned alongside, gone astray closing in. Chirac, 
well positioned. Got a string on the outside. The three of them come down to the wire. Very close. Maybe well positioned. Got a string and Chirac right there too. Then Cactus Charlie. Well positioned picks up the victory. You may remember his recent allowance victory in New York over the likes of Anak Nakal and Seniors Pride. That was another return to the races for this guy who seems to, you know, he comes back in an allowance race. He looks very impressive. He moves into a minor stake and he looks pretty sharp as he did here. And then he kind of tails off again, unfortunately. But he really looks like an interesting horse. He's 5 for 10 lifetime and he scores as the favorite a tick over even money in a close finish over Gone Astray with Chirac only a nose back in third. Well positioned is a bay colt, a son of awesome again from Taxable by Holy Bull. Bred in Ontario by Adina Springs and owned by Paul Pompa Jr. Trained by Richard Dutrow and ridden to victory by Paco Lopez. Well positioned covers the mile in 70 and 141.28. Next up we'll head to Monmouth Park Sunday afternoon. Phillies and mares in the Honey Bee. They go in. They're all in line. The racing in the Honey Bee. And Debonair Darling is sent down for speed with Island Time away well. Stage Trick is right up and on the pace as they move into the turn. These three in a line. Debonair Darling is out running in fourth behind them. Ask the Moon fifth to the outside. Then it's back to Island Time along the rail. Nick's Appealing Lady is next. And then Emily Allstar in the back of the field or checkpoint and talking about love. Make their way to the backstretch. Island time the leader through a quarter of 23 and one fifth seconds on top by a neck. With stage trick alongside second by a length. And then comes Solo Piano in third. Debonair Darling fourth along the rail. Then it's Ask the Moon in fifth. Four lengths off the lead. Nick's Appealing Lady is sixth by another four. Talking about love, Emily All-Star and Checkpoint all together in the back after a half at 46 and three fifth seconds. The solid pace as they go into the far turn. Stage trick on the outside, the leader. On the rail, Island Time is second. Outside of them, Solo Piano goes up third. Debonair Darling fourth along the rail. Ask the Moon under a ride fifth. Two lengths back, and then it Nick's Appealing Lady sixth along the inside. On the far outside, Checkpoint is getting going. Emily All-Star is next, and talking about love. Three quarters in 111 flat. It's wide open, and they're into the stretch. Debonair Darling goes up to grab the lead. Checkpoint on the outside. Debonair Darling and Checkpoint. These two down to the 16th pole. Checkpoint in front. Then Debonair Darling. Nick's appealing lady up the rail late. It's going to be Checkpoint. Debonair Darling was second and then came Ask the Moon and Nick's appealing lady. Checkpoint picks up the victory as a uh, kind of an interesting filly. She had run second last time out in the uh, small stake at Delaware Park in her stakes debut, but uh, that was a pretty impressive performance, a nice uh, nice finish for her. Now she moves up and rallies very strongly from off the pace, six wide to win going away by a length and a quarter. Debonair Darling completes the exacta with Ask the Moon running third. The winner Checkpoint is a bay daughter of Posse from Turning Point by Rahi. Bred in Kentucky by A. Lakin and Sons, owned by Richard Santulli and trained by Alan Goldberg, ridden to victory by Carlos Marquez Jr. Checkpoint covers the mile in 136.92. We'll pause for a brief message. When we return, we've got more great stakes racing action from Churchill, Woodbine, and more.
Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We will continue now in Kentucky Saturday Stakes feature three-year-old fillies on the turf in the Mrs. Revere. And they're off in the Mrs. Revere, a very level beginning. Ice Mist is sent towards the inside and gets the early lead. Aruna is in her slipstream and towards the outside is Dade Babe. And Dade Babe wants the lead and is now sent on by Florent Geroux. And it is Dade Babe who has taken the lead, moves on by two lengths. Ice Mist is racing in second, quiet by seven on the outside in third. And the Grey Wildmere is in, in fourth position. Aruna, the favourite, is taking an extremely strong hold in the early stages, racing in fifth and extending the rider's arms towards the inside in sixth position then is Fugitive Angel and then to the outside La Cloche is next followed then towards the inside by Snowtop Mountain at the back of the field unhurried is Stars to Shine and last of all in the slips through the first quarter of 23 and 4 midway down the back stretch they go and Dade Babe has got the lead she craves she's out in front by two lengths now Ice Mist is racing in second as they go through halfway in the 20th running of the Mrs. Riviera and it is Dade Babe and Florent Geroux out in front by a length and a half to the outside Ice Mist is in second, but it is now a stacking, packing field. To the outside, back in third, is quiet by seven. Aruna is still taking a fierce hole between horses. She wants to go faster than Ramon will let her go. Towards the inside, Wild Mia begins to make a move against the inside hedge, but this is going to be a dash down the lane as they turn for home. Dade Babe has got the lead, but through on the inside is Wild Mia. Wild Mia now quickens away. Here's Aruna on the outside, given the office now by Ramon Dominguez following through. Snowtop Mountain towards the outside. Wild Mia is hanging tough. Aruna has got the lead inside the final furlong. Wild Mia tries to re-rally and does so gamely to the inside. But Aruna is fighting more. She's going to be a perfect three out of three in the USA. Aruna wins the Mrs. Revere. What a turn of foot. Tight second. Wild Mia. Late run. Fugitive Angel. Follow on the outside by Stars to Shine and Snowtop Mountain. Aruna runs her American record to three for three. She won the Pebbles at Belmont last time out and a very impressive allowance up here at Saratoga in her American debut. Here she stalks the pace, makes a five wide move, clearing by horses to win by almost two lengths over Wild Mia with Fugitive Angel also rallying from an outside uh, position to complete the order of the top three. The winner, Aruna, is a dark bay or brown daughter of Mr. Greeley from Surya by Unbridled, bred in Kentucky by Flaxman Holdings and owned by the breeder, trained by Graham Motion, ridden to victory by Ramon Dominguez. Aruna covers the mile in the 16th on the good turf in 146.02. We'll head north of the border now for a pair of stakes races at Woodbine over the weekend. We'll go back to Saturday first, the Kennedy Road for older sprinters. They're at the post. They're off in the Kennedy Road Stakes, Paso Doble. Broke well as did, as did Ravallo and Fatal Bullets up with Ravallo to challenge for the early lead. Signature Red came away running fourth. And Forget the Storm is in fifth position. Then General Brock and Field Commission. It's Ravallo who leads it by a half a length. The Fatal Bullet to Paso Doble is coming on on the outside. And those three line up inside the half mile pole. And that opening a quarter mile was 22 and 1. And Paso Doble comes on and takes the lead now. Fatal Bullet in second position. Ravallo trying to keep up in third and signature. That is fourth. Forget the Storm is a fifth and three lengths off the lead. Then Field Commission and General Brock. And they're inside the quarter pull. Paso Doble outside. And inside Fatal Bullet. A brilliant half mile of 44 and one. Field Commission has some speed to run at from way back. Signature Red is right there. And resurgent between horses. Ravallo. Signature Red comes on. Takes an arrow lead from Fatal Bullet. It's Signature Red. Ravallo's fighting on courageously and coming back. Ravallo on the inside has won the Kennedy Road by a nose. Ravallo to Signature Red and Fatal Bullet.
Ravallo, nice to see this horse who's a favorite of mine, I will admit, back in the winner's circle. In fact, in the winner's circle for the 15th time in his career. He kind of looked like maybe he had tailed off. They had been running him on the grass, and last time out he was a very close-up fifth behind Silver Timber, an eventual Breeders' Cup turf sprint runner-up Century City in the Woodford at Keeneland. He had run his previous two races on the turf as well, but here back onto the synthetic surface, he scores by a game head. Kind of an interesting race. He broke alert got involved early and then decided to take back probably worked out very well to his advantage as Jeffrey Sanchez seems to have uh, figured out a nice way to ride this horse he scores over signature uh, signature red with the very accomplished fatal bullet completing the order of the top three the winner Ravallo is a bay gelding a son of Mutoctum from momentary hope by southern halo bred in Kentucky by heaven trees and owned by Lindy M Redding trained by Don Barr and ridden to victory by Jeffrey Sanchez Ravallo covers the six in 109 flat. We'll head right back to Woodbine and Sunday's running at the Bess Arabian for fillies and mares. They're up paused. The Villa in the Bess Arabian Stakes and Wakama broke running for the early lead, and it's Wakama the early leader, then Sweet Lorena and Moonlit Beauties with that first fight, along with Authentic Cat and Sharp Secretary between horses who lie Indianapolis down the road the rail. Then we have Mary Weather, Jessica Loud woke up to the extreme outside, much obliged between Phillies and Mares as Sugar again is down the road the rail, and trailing this field along the backstretch is Ariana D. And loose on the lead is this long shot, Wakama. Wakama leads at three quarters of a length, now a length to Huai. The opening quarter was in 23 and 1. They head toward the far turn. On the front end, it is Wakama. Moonlit Beauty is just off her flank in second, and Huai third. Sharp Secretary angles between horses, moves within two lengths of the lead. Then we have Authentic Hat and Much Obliged. Indianapolis getting scrubbed on, sent up between horses from off the pace. Charging hard as long shot. Ariana Dews out wide. They're at the top of the stretch, and Huai comes on on the inside of Wakama and takes the lead. On the far outside, Much Obliged is charging hard along with Sugar again, and it's far back early. Sugar again rolling down the center of the track and trying to reel in Huai. Far outside Ariana D came from out of the clouds. Ariana D at long odds to win the best Arabian. Sugar again was second. Huai third and much obliged was fourth. Ariana D picks up the victory under Omar Moreno, a very nice effort by this horse to rally from way back off the pace. In fact, rallied from last to first at almost 20 to 1 to score over Sugar again, the 2 to 1 favorite with Hu Wai back in third. Interestingly enough, Ariana D, most recently the winner of an allowance race at Keeneland over Sweet Lorena, who is a uh, pretty accomplished sprinter who came back in this spot and ran up the track. But uh, obviously this is a horse that likes that synthetic surface, whether it's in Kentucky or in Canada. Ariana D, a dark bay or brown filly, a daughter of Rock Slide from Derby Tie by Black Tie Affair. Bred in Pennsylvania by William B. Thompson Jr. and owned by the breeder, trained by Laurie Silvera and ridden to victory by Omar Moreno. Ariana D covers the 7 and 122.97. We'll head out to the West Coast next for a pair of two year old races. We'll go back to Saturday afternoon at Hollywood Park and the Hollywood Preview. They're at the post. They're off. They're off. Premier Pegasus broke best and goes for the front. Contemplated and industry leader are close up. High level Jeff at the rail. Awesome Patriots on the move and he takes third. The early trailer is Northern Indy. Premier Pegasus will have pressure early from both industry leader and awesome patriot at the rail premier pegasus leads by a half length it's a length and three quarters to northern indy the long shot who moves up outside of florida invader high level jeff high level jeff is fifth now and about four and a half off the lead and the trailer is contemplated past the half mile pole in the 29th hollywood preview stakes premier pegasus is the one to catch he leads three quarters of a length from awesome patriot in second industry leader has backed off just a bit he's now two and a half 
half from the front. A hard-ridden Northern Indy is re-engaged by High Level Jeff. Here's High Level Jeff at the rail, but he's five lengths behind with a quarter mile to run. Contemplated is the trailer and the leader is Premier Pegasus. Premier Pegasus at the top of the stretch. He's a two-length leader now over Awesome Patriot in second. Industry leader is third. The whip is out on High Level Jeff, still seven lengths behind. Premier Pegasus, who comes to the final 16th. Industry leader is second. Then Awesome Patriot com contemplated. It is Premier Pegasus. The 29th Hollywood Preview Stakes goes to Premier Pegasus. He beat Industry Leader by a length and a half. Awesome, awesome Patriot was third and contemplated. Finish fourth. Premier Pegasus runs his record to three for three. He had broken his maiden at Del Mar, then won the Jack Goodman at Hollywood. Now follows it up with yet another stakes victory. One and a half lengths the better of Industry Leader with Awesome Patriot back in the third spot. Premier Pegasus is a dark bear brown son of Fusaichi Pegasus from Squall Linda by Summer Squall. Bred in Kentucky by Chung Myung Kwan and owned by the breeder, trained by the owner breeder and ridden to victory by Alonso Quinones. Premier Pegasus covers the seven in 122.78. Next up, it's two-year-old fillies and Sunday afternoon's running of the moccasin. They're at the post. They're off. Good start. Tails in excess breaks best and goes for the front from recipient away in second. Turbulent descent. Sugar in the morning was a bit slow into stride. She broke fine. She was just slow early, but now she comes on the move. And here's Sugar in the morning. Zazu is four deep in fourth and only about two from the front. Recipient now backs off to race fifth, and the early trailer is Warren's Flyer. Tails in excess, the leader up the back stretch. She's got three within a half length, though. Zazu four wide. Turbulent descent just inside of her. Sugar in the morning, two off the fence. The top four is separated by less than a length and a half. Recipient and Warren's flyer are right there, too. They're only three behind. They leave the back stretch. Tails in excess. A four wide Zazu. Inside of her, turbulent descent. Sugar in the morning tries to stay with those three and Four of them are going to line up at the top of the stretch. Look at that. Four two-year-old fillies within a head of each other. Then comes Warren's flyer. Recipients gone. They run to the top of the stretch. Turbulent descent. Three off the fence. Zazu's the gray outside of her. These two now kick on. Tails in excess. Battles at the rail. Turbulent descent is handridden by David Flores again. And turbulent descent leads Zazu. Turbulent descent. She's coasting along, although only three quarters in front. And turbulent descent is going to win again and win in hand. Wow, she's got a big future. Turbulent Descent beats Zazu a length and a half. Tails in excess might have been third, close with Warren's flyer. Turbulent Descent looks like an interesting filly indeed. Two for two, winning off by a length and a half. Here is the odds-on favorite. She had earned herself a 91 buyer speed figure in her career debut. A pretty sharp performance that afternoon. Follows it up with yet a nice performance here, scoring at the extent expense rather of Zazu with tails in excess back in third. The winner, Turbulent Descent, is a bay daughter of congrats from Roger Sue by Forestry. Bred in Florida by the Ocala Stud, owned by Blinkers on Racing, Dave Aurelio Robert Butler et al., trained by Mike Pipey and ridden to victory by David Flores. Turbulent Descent covers the 7-123.15. We'll pause now for a brief, a brief message, and when we return, we've got a busy week's worth of stakes racing action from the Big A. Please stay with us.
This portion of the program brought to you by Capital Bets. For more information, go to CapitalOTB.com. Catch the excitement with Capital OTB Online. It's now easier than ever with internet wagering at CapitalOTB.com. Wager online and get track odds, online contests, membership specials, and it's secure and fan-friendly. Whether it's a big stakes day like the Kentucky Derby, Belmont Stakes, Traverse Stakes, Breeders' Cup, or just a great day of racing, wagering online at CapitalOTB.com is always simple and easy. Sign up today at CapitalOTB.com because your chances are better with Capital OTB. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We will continue now at the Big A. We had a lot of great racing over the course of the last week. Now, last weekend we had the first portion of the Stallion Series. Uh, the Great White Way Division was brought back on Wednesday, combining the Phillies and the Colts and Geldings. So uh, we'll start things off by going back to last Wednesday's running of the Great White Way Division of the New York Stallion Series. And they're off. And they all came away to a good start. Eminent Tail down on the inside. Goes for the lead. Verbosity is up close. Freud's Anna Streak is alongside. Then it's Let's Shoot Pools racing in fourth. For Wes is fifth. Break of two. Lake Song is sixth. Then it's another three lengths to Uncle Smokey, who's at the back in seventh. Eminent Tail up front with the lead three quarters of a length over Verbosity. The opening quarter was 21 and four fifth seconds. Eminent Tail the leader. Verbosity giving chase in second. On the outside is Let's Shoot Pool in third. Then Freud's Anna Streak in fourth, about four lengths off the lead. Then it's for West, Lake Song, and Uncle Smokey. And the field is at the top of the stretch after a half and 45 and two. And it's Eminent Tail who gets clear here. Eminent Tail in front by four. Bravosity couldn't keep up. Freud's and a streak now moves into second. Bravosity's on the outside. Coming for the 16th, Paul Eminent Tail with a seven length lead. Freud's and a streak in second. Uncle Smokey moves to third. Eminent Tail, much the best. Freud's Anna Streak was second and Uncle Smokey third. Eminent Tail looked pretty sharp in his career debut. Threw in a little bit of a clunker, shall we say, in a finger leg stake last time out. But here it was never in doubt. He showed very sharp early speed under Ramon Dominguez. Drew clear to win by nearly eight lengths as the two to one second choice over Fr Freud's Anna Streak with Uncle Smokey back in the third spot. The winner, Eminent Tail, is a two year old bay son of Read the Footnotes from Six Tales by Tale of the Cat. Bred in New York by Thomas Narlinger Limited and Tony Gray, owned by Winter Park Partners, Sequel Racing, and Dennis Narlinger. Trained by Richard Dutro Jr. and ridden to victory by Ramon Dominguez, Eminent Tail covers the six in 111.65. We'll head back to last Wednesday and two-year-old fillies in the swirl away stakes. And there in the gate. And they're off. Saltamontes breaks well. So does Queens Harbor on the outside. So it's Queens Harbor and Saltamontes heads apart for the lead as they move up the chute. Nicole's Miss L is just in behind and racing in third. Ready gets gold in between horses. Fourth, Yawkey Way on the outside in fifth with Miss Valentine and floating alone right together. The trailer is Hessenite in eighth. The quarter was running 22 and four fifth seconds. Saltamontes leads by a half length over Queens Harbor. Yawkey Way moves up on the outside into third. Ready gets gold is in between horses and Nicole's Miss L is down at the rail. Now it's almost five lengths. Back to uh, Miss Valentine, then floating alone, and Hessenite remains at the back. Half mile in 46 seconds. Sal Damantes narrowly over Queens Harbor as they race midway on the turn. Those two have opened up three lengths now on Yawkey Way and Ready Gets Gold. Nicole's Miss L has dropped out of it. Then it's Miss Valentine moving up on the outside into fifth, but about seven lengths from the lead. 
They come into the stretch, three quarters in one, 11 and three. Sal Tamantes is under the whip. On the outside is Queens Harbor. Here comes Miss Valentine with a rush on the outside. Miss Valentine up to collar. Sal Tamantes for the lead. It's Miss Valentine. Sal Tamantes battles on on the inside. Miss Valentine, Sal Tamantes. Those two come to the wire. Miss Valentine by ahead. Sal Tamantes second. Then Reddy gets gold and Nicole's Miss L. Miss Valentine runs her record to two for two with a very nice performance by scoring by a neck over Saltamontes, who was extremely game in this spot. I thought she ran a huge race. Top of the stretch looked like she might be going to back out of it, but dug in grimly under John Velasquez to maintain second over Reddy Gets Gold, who rallied at 63 to one to finish third. Miss Valentine is a chestnut daughter of a fleet Alex from Miss Yaya by Gilded Time. Bred in New York by Waterville Lake Stables Limited and owned by the Breeders, trained by Christophe Clement and ridden to victory by Ramon Dominguez, Miss Valentine covers the mile in 139.80. We'll head into the weekend now and we've added a couple of the races on the overnight program from the, uh, from the weekend because they really turned out to be some pretty good races and I think we've got some horses in here that will be worth keeping an eye on if you're going to be handicapping over the winter time at the Big A. We'll start things out with the Mad Hatter Stakes on Saturday. They're in the gate. And they're off. Good start for Understatement and Senior's Pride, too. Understatement to the lead, though. Understatement strikes out for the lead right from the beginning, but Senior's Pride not going to let him loose. And then it's General Perfect is there, third on the outside. Aya comes out running in fourth. Then a break of five. Back to Dry Martini and more than a reason. Around the clubhouse turn. And understatement is hounded by Seniors Pride. Tracked by General Perfect through a quarter and 23 seconds flat. Strong opening quarter mile here. Understatement working to hold that lead. Seniors Pride making him work for it. General Perfect third. Four lengths back. Aya on hold under stout restraint is Aya. And Cornelio Velasquez lets that battle rage up front. Still at the back of the pack are more than a reason and dry martini. The opening half was 46 and three-fifths seconds. Punishing fractions up front for understatement. Still holds that lead. Seniors pride. Second by two. General Perfect third. Aya still unhurried. Another three back to more than a reason. Dry Martini is called on for more run, but no real response yet. Around the far turn. Understatement. Seniors pride still ratcheting up that pressure. Three quarters up on the board in one ten and two. More than a reason is firing today, and here he comes now. Bursting through between horses. More than a reason now third. A has been in a drive for a quarter mile, but he's still fourth. But it's still understatement in front. Seniors Pride's been after him the entire trip, but understatement is still holding him at bay. Seniors Pride is there. More than a reason has one for long to do it. And Dry Martini getting on track very late in the game. Understatement, game. Seniors Pride, resolute, down to those two. Here comes Dry Martini with a late run. Here's the wire. Seniors Pride in a photo with understatement. And right there, too, was the old vet. Dry Martini. Seniors Pride coming in out of a third behind well positioned, we've already seen, as well as a knock Nicole and a Belmont allowance race. Two races back, he ran into Bird, Bird Run. That one came back to win the Rose Classic last week down at Calder. So Seniors Pride had been running against good ones, ends up scoring at 9 to 1 by a nose over the odds on understatement with Dry Martini, last year's Suburban winner, rallying to finish third. The winner, Seniors Pride, is a chestnut gelded son of Sweet Southern Saint from Aleutian Gold by Prospector's Gamble. Bred in Florida by Joseph Pierce Jr. and Anthony Bardaro, owned by Jill Pecoraro, trained by Michael Tenuzzo, and ridden the victory by David Cohen. Seniors Pride covers the nine furlongs in 149.87. Next up, we've got another overnight stake, three-year-old filly sprinting in the foil stakes. And they're off. Storm and a prayer, racing to the front. 
Simply Spiteful second on the inside. Then coming up the rail now, Babe Baby, who comes on through it on the far outside. Southern Truth right up and on that hot pace of Storm and a Prayer. There's a break of four back to Dad Echo, and the early trailer is Kid Kate. Storm and a Prayer rips through a 22 and 1 opening quarter mile. Simply Spiteful, not far behind in second. Babe Baby down toward the inside third. Southern Truth is now fourth. Break one other three back to Dad Echo. Kit Kate now starting to come alive as the field approaches the top of the stretch. Here's Simply Spiteful to take the lead. Simply Spiteful in front. Storm and a Prayer is now giving way second. Bad Bay Baby is now third. And then it's Southern Truth. And on the far outside, Dat Echo. Kit Kate looking for a way through in between horses now. They're coming and chasing Simply Spiteful down to the line. And it'll be Simply Spiteful. One by almost two. Kid Kate second, followed by Bebe Baby and Dad Echo. Simply Spiteful, a filly that kind of always has looked like she should be a pretty nice filly. She's had a couple of ins and outs, a couple of layoffs, but here she scores the victory. Second off the layoff. Uh, last time out was fourth in a Philadelphia allowance race, coming back off of an early Saratoga freshening. That seems to have set her up very nicely for an 8-1 to one victory here. Over again, the odds-on favorite, Kid Kate, settling for second with Babai Baby rallying to third. The winner, Simply Spiteful, is a gray your own daughter of Spitestown from Deb's Charm by Silver Charm, bred in Kentucky by B.P. Walden and H. Sexton, owned by Three Diamonds Farm and trained by Michael Trombetta, ridden to victory by John Velasquez. Simply Spiteful covers the six in 109.36. Next up, three-year-olds in the grade three discovery. There in the gate. And they're off. Dominant genes came over at the start. It caused a chain reaction that puts over communication at the back of the pack. Over communication usually runs up pretty close to that pace. The field moving into the clubhouse turn. Golden Mocha down to the Restormy's Majesty now going on to take the lead. Dominant Jeans after that rocky start is up with the pacemakers. Then it's Al Mutasi on the outside of over communication is now down on the rail. At the back of the pack, not abroad. Antiques North into the back stretch. Stormy's Majesty has confronted Golden Mocha. The opening quarter mile was 23 and 4 fifths seconds. Up the back stretch run. Golden Mocha narrowly. Stormy's Majesty second. Dominant Jeans just outside them races third over communication. Down on the inside is now fourth. Abu Tasib is fifth. Right there in the thick of it in between horses. At the back of the pack are the two trailers. Not abroad is on the outside. Teeks North toward the rail. Five and a half lengths from front to back after an opening half mile of 47 and four. Into the far turn, Stormy's Majesty continues to spar with Golden Mocha. Now, Stormy's Majesty has taken command from Golden Mocha. Stormy's Majesty, the leader, the leader by a length. On the outside, not abroad, is rallying boldly now. Over communication comes on through between horses. Then dominant jeans, Amu Tasib takes to the far outside, and the trailer takes north, but it's wide open at the top of the stretch. Stormy's Majesty, the leader, the leader coming down to the last furlong now by three. Not abroad is chasing that one home. Teeks North there on the far outside and over communication coming down to the finish. Stormy's Majesty and Edgar Prado sharp in victory to win the Discovery Handicap. Winning it by a length and a half over Not Abroad. Teeks North was third over communication was fourth. Stormy's Majesty back after a rough trip 10th in the Empire Classic, scoring the win by two lengths. Uh, on or near the front end every step of the way from late moving not abroad with Teeks North also rallying well to complete the top three. The winner Stormy's Majesty now five for eight lifetime won the Albany handicap up here at Saratoga. Began his career I believe with three consecutive victories. Uh, came a cropper in the running of the Jim Dandy but you know he's faced some pretty nice horses and obviously handled himself pretty well. He didn't have the easiest of uh, easiest, uh, easiest trip last time out in the Empire Classic but a much better trip here. 
Stormy's Majesty is the three-year-old chestnut son of Stormy Atlantic from Raffi's Dream by Raffi's Majesty. Bred in New York by the Majesty Stud and owned by the breeder, trained by Dominic Lucio, ridden to victory by Edgar Prado, Stormy's Majesty runs the mile and a furlong in 150.02. Got a pair of overnight stakes from the Sunday card as well at Aqueduct. We'll start things out early on the card. Three-year-old sprinting in the groovy. They're in the gate. And they're off. Sunrise, Smarty, Bank Heist, and Rule Monai between those two. And it is Bank Heist out for the lead. Sunrise, Smarty now second on the outside, and Rule Monai now third. Not far behind, close to the edge, holds his spot at the fence. Two and a half lengths back to Dixie Notion, who's now racing in fifth place, followed by Remand. And the early trailer is Mad for Smarty. And it is Bank Heist moving in a quick clip here. 22 and 1 was the opening quarter. But Rule Monai runs along second now. And close to the edge comes up the fence third. Sunrise Smarty's now back running in fourth. Then Dixie Notion remand and mad for Smarty. Around the far turn. And here comes the favorite now. Rule by night up and after the lead. Bank high still narrowly. Rule by night right alongside now in front. Rule by night is now the leader. Sunrise Smarty moving on the outside now from third. And from the back, it's close to the edge. Fourth and Dixon Ocean. They hit the top of the stretch now. And Rule by Night rolls to a four-length lead coming into the last furlong. Sunrise Smarty there on the outside and down toward the rail is, uh, is uh, Bank Heist back running in third now on the far outside. Dixon Ocean, good battle for second, not for first. Rule by Night romps. One by... Eight lengths on the line. Close for a second there. Sunrise Smarty or Dixie Notion. Rule by night, absolutely lighting up the racetrack. Got a little bit of a bobbled break, but got right into things early under Ramon Dominguez, who ends up running clear by nine and a quarter lengths in a very, very serious racehorse time, winning easily over Sunrise Smarty at seven to one. Long shot Dixie Notion completes the order of the top three well back. The winner ruled by night, won a Mammoth Allowance race a couple of races back, and was a good second last time out behind Bank Merger and the Gallant Bob at Philadelphia Park. He was a horse that we saw really come to hand quickly for the Asmussen Stable last winter time over the, uh, over the course of the winter at Aqueduct, and if they decide to leave him here this winter, I think he might be an interesting horse to follow. Ruled by night is a chestnut son of Malibu Moon from Silver Reserve by Silver Deputy, bred in Kentucky by Sierra Farm and owned by Gold Square, trained by Steve Asmussen and ridden to victory by Ramon Dominguez. Rule by night covers the seven in 120.67. One more race to bring to you from the weekend, that the co-featured Monarch's Maze on Sunday at Aqueduct, three-year-olds on grass. And the rough. Little Mike striking off of the lead. Lubash is there on the outside. Flamin' Hot tucks in behind him. He got a good spot early running in third. And Cure the Fever is now fourth. Barrel of Love is fifth. More than steady. Three wide into the turn is sixth. Lethal combination at the back of the pack. The last of the ball is They Call Me Giant. Up front it's Little Mike. Little Mike now steps out. Leads a length and a half. Lubash runs along second. Beyond a 24 and two opening quarter mile. Under stout restraint, Flamin' Hot is third. Well held is Flamin' Hot. Also under good restraint there, Barrel of Love is in between horses. Rating on the outside is more than steady. And then Cure the Fever skims the rail. Drafting in behind horses, lethal combination now. Asked to pick it up just a bit, lethal combination, about seven or eight from the lead. A break of another four, back to the trailer, they call me Giant. The half is 48 and three-fifths seconds. Little Mike committed to that lead. Still there as they move into the far turn. Three furlongs to go. Little Mike trying to do it all the way on the lead. Lubash has been second throughout. Lubash has to pick it up. He's still a length behind second. Two and a half lengths back. Flaming Hot working harder in third. Barrel of Love rolls up now on the far outside from fourth. Then Cure the Fever down toward the inside. In between those two, it's lethal combination. Little Mike and Lubash still 1-2. They've been 1-2 all the way around the racetrack. It is Little Mike with a tenuous lead. Lubash alongside now in front. Lubash puts a head in front. Little Mike fighting him hard all the way down to the line. Find the back. Flamin' Hot is third, but it's going to be Lubash. Lubash beats the favorite on the wire by two. 
Little Mike checks in second, followed by Flamin' Hot third, close for fourth there, more than steady, and cure the fever. Lubash, this is a horse that just don't seem to get no respect. He goes off at a long price once again, seven to one in here, off a little bit of a clunker last time out. He ran fairly well uh, behind Skip a Date, running fourth against some good older horses last time out. But you may remember his big win up here on the front end in the Stallion Series race, and of course, that huge win at a very big price in the Fifth Marine. So if you're a fan of this horse and you've just bet him straight every old time he goes out there, you're probably making money. He tried something a little different here. He raided off the very quick hot Mike, who was the, uh, the favorite at a tick over even money. Uh, this is a horse that was coming in off of three consecutive victories on the front end, and it figured that uh, one of them was going to have to concede. Lubash did, and uh, did so kindly, still able to win by two and a half lengths over the favored little Mike with flaming Hot back in third. Lubash is a bay son of Freud from Nasty Cure by Cure the Blues, bred in New York by Aliyui Ben J. Stable, owned by the breeder, trained by Jim, Jim Ryerson, and ridden a victory by Jose Lascano. Lubash covers the mile on the turf in 136.88. That'll wrap up a busy edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you for joining us this week. We hope you will be able to join us again next week. We're going to have a very busy program following the Thanksgiving holiday. We certainly also would like to wish you all a very happy and safe Thanksgiving. Thanks for joining us on HNC. We'll see you next week.